Howdy fellas, B Junior here from B Junior's Movie Cave on the Endurance Productions YouTube channel. Tonight's subject, revenge. Oh sweet revenge. Mainly revenge flicks, if you may, if you will. Um, what makes revenge flicks so interesting? Why do we flock to them? Why are they so tasty for the viewing experience? Well, that's what we're going to talk about here today. What I've done for today's video is I'm pulled off about mm, 10 to 15 recommendations and I'm going to talk about them individually along the way here and they're they're all revenge flicks in my opinion and they span from DVD, one VHS and some high def pickups in there. These are just ones I've pulled out at random off the shelves back there and ones that I can really recommend they have decent rewatchability to them. I mean that's the thing I noticed about a lot of revenge flicks while some don't last as long in the public eyes because a lot of them come off as quote unquote mysteries or suspense films with a revenge plot mixed in and there again you're just kind of waiting to see what the big reveal is at the end and once you've seen it you've seen it there's nothing there's no reason to go back to it but with a lot of these in this stack that I've pulled out today for today's video these in my opinion have decent rewatchability the ones that you'll want to pull off the shelf and just see those tasty revenge scenes all over again uh, time and time again now I know especially in the American audiences whenever you say revenge flick or revenge film everybody ultimately always says okay death wish you know that's the first one they, they talk about okay that one is on the list here I did pull those out these are the death wish films here I don't have part five I have the first one of course and two three and four on the little multi disc that I got recently I can recommend these, but these are, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on these because every time you hear uh, somebody doing recommendations on revenge films, Death Wish is always in there. And what can I say about Death Wish movies that I haven't said before or anybody else for that matter? Uh, Charlie Bronson's in every single one of them. He does the same plot. You know, something happens to him or his family members and he goes, or a buddy or a friend, and he goes and kicks ass. That's basically your plot to every one of them. They're good. I love to watch these movies every once in a while. And, uh, this is a pretty good way to pick these up on these multi-packs and stuff like that if you can and or special editions if there are such a thing I'm not real sure but Death Wish movies I can recommend but I want to spend a little more time on some that you may or may not know of or ones that I've experienced recently that I can highly recommend let's uh, take a drink of water here I gotta pace myself guys gotta rest the voice a little bit uh, is it water or white lightning I'll never tell. I'll never tell. This is one of my recent Blue Underground pickups. It is Street Law with Franco Nero. In the, uh, it's an Italian Enzo Castellari revenge film. And a lot of people say this one's a Death Wish ripoff film. I beg to differ. It does have a revenge plot to it, but it's got a whole lot more action scenes in it that are more stylistic in the Italian uh, vein of filmmaking. Um, the Blue Underground Disc has got great quality, audio commentary, uh, some behind the scenes interviews with Franco Nero. Um, I can highly recommend picking this one up. It's got excellent rewatchability factor to it. I want to watch this one all the time. Excellent uh, uh, soundtrack to the movie, just kind of catchy. Uh, I give five bucks to anybody who can tell me. It's, it's got English lyrics to the, uh, the soundtrack in the movie, but... Uh, I can only understand about half of it, so if you know the lyrics, drop a comment below. Hey, that'd be awesome to figure that out. But uh, awesome revenge plot that centers around a local businessman. I think he's a scientist, photographer, or something like that. Basically, he gets pummeled and beaten in a robbery raid and taken hostage briefly, and he seeks revenge on these uh, these uh, burglar type, drug dealer types, and uh, hijinks ensue. And excellent action scenes. Uh, the only uh, action revenge movie that I've ever known where Franco Nero or the main character for that matter takes on a 66 fastback Mustang and wins. <laughs> There's literally a fight between Franco Nero and a Mustang. It's, it's awesome. Uh, next one on my list, this one pops up on a lot of people's revenge lists but uh, it deserves a good mention. It is of course Miss 45. I can highly recommend this one for repeat viewings. Um, mainly because it's just a great film. I mean, it, it's just got a good plot. Um, it's got horror movie sensibilities to it. Um, it's one of those that kind of bridges the gap on a lot of different genres. Um, can't say enough about it. It's one. It's an Abel Ferreira film, one of his earlier films. 
one of his best. The only problem with this one is its its availability is kind of you have to import it. This is a, a Korean uh, import disc. It is in English and everything. Widescreen. It's not an anamorphic widescreen transfer, but it's it, it is a one eight five one ratio. Um, bare bones DVD, but the quality is okay on it. Um, this is about the cheapest, most economical way to pick it up is an import disc. I think there's a very good version. It's a French uh, DVD version that you can get of this, a two discer, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but uh, always enjoyed Miss Forty Five. It's just about a young lady who's a fashion designer in North North Carolina. Man, I tell you, it's, I'm I'm running low on steam, guys. In New York City, and uh, she gets uh, raped twice in one day and subdues her second attacker, steals his gun, and basically goes crazy and starts uh, going around taking her revenge out on any male she can find at night or just whenever it pleases her to shoot them, basically. Um, the climax of this movie at the party scene during Halloween is very cool. I, I don't want to spoil it, but Miss 45 is a good recommendation. Let's take another sip of water, guys. Mm, good water, good water. This is another one that's kind of picked up momentum. This is one I used to watch on cable, late night Cinemax all the time growing up. And uh, rented it on VHS many times. And This one's kind of interesting. It is Savage Streets with Linda Blair and Linnea Quigley. Um, I, I do have the slipcover. This is the two-disc, uh, I believe it's the BCI edition that went out of print as soon as it was pushed out the back door of the company. <laughs> um Literally, that is that is the story behind it. This BCI two-disc two uh, special edition, which is a very good edition. Tons of special features on it and a good good picture quality, too. Um, I talked to Linda Blair's agent at Fright Night Film Fest 2011 at the end of the table, and he said he saw me get this signed, the slipcover. It's on display up there. Um, he basically told me a little bit of background. He said that BCI, the company that put this out, went out of business literally as they were packing the shipments and pushing them out the back door of the warehouse. So that's why this was out for like two weeks and then it went out of print. So there's you a little bit of DVD history on this one. Where the only rule is an eye for an eye. Pretty cool flick, guys. Um, it's just one of those that it's just got good rewatchability, excellent soundtrack to it. Highly recommend picking this one up if you can. This one's really expensive right now um, because it's went out of print. However, Arrow Video is back on the scene, and they do have this in a special edition DVD format with a little fold-out poster and all that. You may have to pay a few bucks, but you can probably get it between 10 to 20 American, somewhere around in there, which is fair for an import DVD, and Arrow does a really good job on their DVDs. Um, one of these days, I will pick that one up. More to the point, Savage Street centers around Linda Blair. Her little sister gets raped in the movie that's played by Linda, or Linda, Linnea Quigley. And uh, there's this really ruthless little gang of scumbags that basically picks on her girl gang in the movie. And uh, she decides at one point, uh, about towards the third act of the film, to take the law in her own hands and take revenge on the whole entire gang herself. And then the rest ensues. I don't want to spoil it if you've never seen it. You owe it to yourself to watch Savage Streets, grab a VHS of it, get the DVD, get a buddy to uh, show you his copy. I highly recommend it. You won't disappoint. It's one of my old school favorites. Here's a newer one that uh, was put out by Magnet releasing about the last, it was put out about two, maybe three years ago. It is I Saw the Devil. This uh, was promoted mainly as a horror movie, but it's more, it's really a revenge film. It's uh, about a psychopathic killer. It's a Korean made movie. Um, you do have to watch it with English subtitles, I believe, or the English dub voices, I think. Um, the DVD, and it is out on Blu-ray as well. I can highly recommend picking this one up, guys. It's one of the better movies that's come out in the last decade because there hasn't been a whole lot of good revenge films put out at all, or horror movies for that matter, in the last decade or so. They're far and few between. There have been some, but there's not been a whole lot. This one follows a, uh, a secret agent or a, a, I don't want to call him a secret agent really. He's like a secret service agent for the, the uh, country of Korea. and Basically his uh, fiance, I think it is, gets uh, raped, killed, everything mutilated by this uh, really dastardly uh, scumbag uh, guy, the psychopath guy, and who's done it to many uh, a young woman. And basically, he takes law in his own hands, takes some time off work after her funeral, and basically, what's interesting about this film is that it does a revenge film plot, 
but takes it to another level because and I'm, this is going to be a little bit of a spoiler, so skip on ahead if you don't want to hear this. What's really cool about this one is the Secret Service agent guy, he basically does it in sections. He basically does his revenge on him, like breaks his leg or cuts his tendon on his leg and then has a doctor patch him up, knocks him out, throws him on the side of the road, gives him money to get himself medication, gets him patched up and then does it again to him, takes revenge on him again and again. And then it's got kind of a Texas Chainsaw uh, element in it too because you find out maybe towards the third act of the film that the killer in the movie actually has a small, small group of... Uh, cannibalistic killer people that he hangs out with that come into the plot later in the movie and but that's just really it's just a really good film it's a bit over long it's about 20 good minutes over long but it it just you don't feel like it's that long when you watch it I really enjoyed this one I saw the devil didn't disappoint and I've watched it a couple times since I bought it so I really recommend that one uh, this is gonna be a long video guys settle in this is a newer one that came out probably about a decade ago. Um, except the theatrical version of this movie is more of like a revenge dark comedy movie slash action film. It is, of course, Mel Gibson in Payback. If you're going to get Payback, view the real version of the film or as close to the real version as they tried to shoot or the director tried to shoot. This is Payback straight up the director's cut. Get a hold of this disc because they did the reordering of the movie the way the director wanted it. Plus, they took out characters that they like the Chris the Chris Christopherson character that's in the theatrical cut. He's not even in this movie. It's just a different kind of situation. Plus, the characters are a lot dark. Like Mel Gibson's character, he's a lot darker the way he should be in the movie. And uh, it's a good little revenge film with some comedy kind of mixed in or dark comedy mixed in, but. Uh, I don't know, I just always enjoyed Payback. It's just one of those rare kind of uh, situations where Mel's not really playing a character that you would expect Mel Gibson to play, so even despite his problems over the last decade, but uh, yeah. Payback, I can recommend that one. Another Blue Underground one I picked up recently. This was a really surprising one, too. I didn't expect a whole lot from it. It is Violent City with Charles Bronson. Now, before you get started thinking, oh, it's just another Death Wish ripoff made by Italians. No, it's not. It is an Italian or a foreign-made film uh, starring Charles Bronson, Telly Savalas, and I believe Jill Ireland, who he married later uh, is the blonde-headed lady that showed up in a lot of his films along the 70s and 80s. Um, Violent City is basically, I think Charles Bronson is a, I've only watched it once, so bear with me, but He's basically a mercenary who tried to quit the business, and he takes his revenge out on Telly Savalas' mob character and his personnel, basically. It's not your typical macho, machismo, uh, Death Wish-esque Bronson outing. It's a it's a very well-made movie, kind of in the vein of street law. It has that Italian feel or foreign-made feel to it. Atmosphere, the soundtrack is great to it. The action scenes are great in this movie. Um... I highly recommend it, guys. I'm thinking that the, uh, yeah, the director directed another movie called Revolver, which starred uh, Fabio Testi, I believe it was, another uh, genre great in these line of movies. But uh, Violent City, I would at least give this one a rental on Netflix, see if you like it first, and then if so, get the Blue Underground disc. I don't think that one will disappoint. Have to bear with me, guys. My voice has been challenged here lately. It's trying to leave me, but I'm not going to let it. Onward and Upward. Uh, thriller. They call her One Eye. This was a recent pickup. Um, I've already been through the whole yellow cover versus the red cover ordeal. I'm not going to go through that again. <laughs> that one's been covered enough. But essentially, the story behind this one is it's about a young, it's a Swedish made film, very low budget, early 70s. I think around 1973 is when this movie was made. One of the uh, first modern Death Wish style movies where it's a total revenge plot. It takes its time. It's not. It's a slow burn. It does nothing really actiony starts happening till about midway through the film, but it takes its time and builds character for one eye. The one eye character. There she is with a big shotgun there. Basically, she is a young lady who has a uh, run in with a child molester early in life, and she becomes mute through the ordeal. She lives on a farm with her, I think her aunt and uncle. I'm unsure. I've only watched it about one and a half times so far. I haven't watched it full twice yet. But uh, She goes to live on a farm with these two uh, individuals, and basically 
she misses the bus to therapy one day and gets picked up by a pimp, basically, who presses women into prostitution and drug dependence. He takes her and kidnap, kidnap, winds her and dines her, gets her drunk, and then kidnaps her, gets her addicted to heroin, puts her in a, presses her into prostitution, and then uh, basically along the way she learns that if she doesn't break out of this, she's going to be killed off or beaten to death or something. She's just going to be left for dead soon. So basically what she does, she takes the money that she gets from being a prostitute under this odious pimp guy, basically go, takes her time off. She has like a day or two off a week. He gives her time off. She goes and uh, learns. She pays a karate instructor to teach her how to fight. She goes to a shooting range, learns how to shoot weapons and handle guns. She even hires a driving instructor to show her how to sport drive a vehicle. And then, the third act of the film, she basically just straps on the black leather coat, I believe it is, and saws off a shotgun and goes to town with the revenge plot and takes out uh, all the uh, drug dealer, pimp guy. She takes out all the bad guys, the people that uh, took advantage of her in prostitution, everything of that nature. I highly recommend picking it up. It's one of these good uh, Synapse Films releases. Um, Synapse does a really good job. They've cleaned this one up as much as it could be, I guess. No Blu-ray on that one to my knowledge, but uh, I don't think it'll disappoint. I do want to say for you younger viewers out there, beware. The red version, the red covered version, does have 30 to 35 seconds of hardcore porn in it. And also, I think there's one half second of an eye puncture scene that's added in this. This one does have the eye puncture scene where she loses her eye, but I think it has like literally a half second missing from it. Never seen the red version, but that's just what I'm told from my buds on here on YouTube, so rock on with that. Here's one that I have probably watched at least five times in the last year. I absolutely love this film. I don't know why. It's kind of goofy, hokey in some spots, but I really love it. It's a kind of a long-lost William Lustig film, who you know, he's a director who directed Maniac, Maniac Cop for that matter. Um, you know, a few other films, and he also runs Blue Underground, that's his company. Um, William Lustig's Vigilante. I, I would, this is the Anchor Bay disc. I would highly recommend picking up the new Blue Underground disc. I got this because it was cheap. I'm planning on getting the Blue Underground Blu-ray of this. I hear it's really cool. Um, but Vigilante, stars uh, Robert Forster and uh, I believe his name is Fred Williamson, another uh, black exploitation actor of the day and action star. Um, early 80s entry from William Lustig. I think he did this about two years after Maniac. Basically, guys, it's, it's revenge at its most machismo, basically because uh, Robert Forster knows that his co-workers, Fred Williamson and a few other guys, uh, are kind of like uh, they go out at night and take law into their own hands and uh, beat up street thugs and issue their own brand of justice, basically. They try to talk him into it because he's like an ex-cop, I think it is, or something of that nature. And he's working as a welder or a mechanic right now. And He says, no, 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 I've got family life. I don't want to do that anymore. And, uh, I don't want to deal with those kind of things. And basically, well, a la Death Wish, his... Uh, uh, wife gets taken advantage of, beaten and raped, and his child gets killed, I believe. And basically, at that point, he says, "Okay, I'm part of the group now." And they go on these raids and take it, try to find the gang that uh, did this to his family, and the revenge plot ensues. So you're seeing a cycle here. All of these are going to have about the same plot to them, you know, revenge on the those that took uh, took advantage of innocent people, but just the way that these are done that I feel like uh, have a good rewatchability. But Vigilante, I really enjoy that one. Good uh, music score in that one as well. I think uh, Brad Fidel did the music in that one. Let me check here. No, Jay Chataway who did uh, music for uh, like the Missing in Action films and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of 80s action films. He did a real good score for that one as well. Here's one, the last DVD before I get to my last three Blu-rays and my VHS tape over here. Sorry this one's running long, guys, but I really got to get these revenge flicks out of my system today. This one I was on the fence about because it starts out kind of like your regular 80s action film, but it's just got that that uh, that 80s addictive quality to it, and the third act of the film is basically a revenge plot. It's uh, Rutger Hauer in Wanted, Dead, or Alive. Um, basically, he's an ex-CIA guy who 
is now a self-made bounty hunter and does his job very well, by the way. Um, he has an old, he does a few jobs and you see what he, what he is and he kind of works hand in hand with the local police department, has a police buddy and a budding relationship with a girlfriend. He just kind of knows something's going to go wrong. Um, what makes this one different is he's a highly trained operative. A lot of these other guys were just like every man who just took law in their own hands. Uh, sort of like Charles Bronson in uh, The First Death Wish. But uh, Rutger Hauer basically has an old uh, an old enemy come to light in the, and lo and behold, it's Gene Simmons from Kiss. Back in the early 80s, early to mid 80s, when Gene Simmons was trying to be an actor, <laughs> he had his hair short from the... Uh, I believe it was the music from the Elder Days where they all had their hair cut short. They did a few movies, um, Runaway, this movie, and I don't know, a few other ones. Anyway, he makes a really good villain in this movie. He plays a, like an Arab terrorist in this one. Uh, basically, this movie is directed by Gary Sherman, who directed, uh, I believe, Dead, Dead, and, Dead or Alive, Dead and Alive, or whatever that horror movie is. I can't remember. what. It's a good Blue Underground when it's out or an Anchor Bay disc. Anyway, getting off on a tangent there. Wanted Dead or Alive, he's a highly trained CIA operative who works as a bounty hunter now, and basically, somewhere along the way, about the second act of the film, he figures out that he's being set up by the government that sent him out to find this terrorist who gave him kind of the leeway to go find uh, Gene Simmons' character. He, they were using him as bait, basically, and in the process, Gene Simmons kills his best buddy on the police force and his uh, girlfriend that he's been dating for a while and was going to start a new life with. Well, they pissed off the wrong guy because he. the third act of this film is just revenge gold, basically. Puts on his black leather riding gear, takes off on his motorcycle, and has this cool little uh, short-barreled uh, shotgun, pump shotgun, and uh, goes and takes his revenge on the whole entire uh, terrorist flock that comes in to help Gene Simmons. And The way he does Gene Simmons in at the end of the movie is just great. He just uh, says, F the bonus, and pulls the pin on the grenade and blows his head up. It's just, it's unreal. Awesome. Anyway, here's some high-def one, guys. There's a couple of newer ones that are out that have come out in the last decade that I just personally like. I just want to throw these in and say a few quick words. Man on Fire with Denzel Washington. This one's way over long. I, I don't want to, I didn't really want to throw it in there, but I just grabbed it because it's a good high-def one. Um, it's a Tony Scott film, so it's got that really nauseating shaky camera in a lot of spots that I don't really care for but I've grown to like it over the years I can recommend that one here's one that I didn't think I was gonna have a high rewatchability to but it's called The Brave One with Jodie Foster I found myself going back and revisiting this movie it's a Neil Jordan film who directed uh, I believe it was uh, oh uh, The Company of Wolves and a few other movies uh, the vampire movie with uh, Tom Cruise and uh, Brad Pitt and all that. Um, he's directed a few films um, that I've got in my collection, but The Brave One basically is a your basic uh, revenge plot that I highly recommend. I mean, it's just one of those that's kind of addictive. It's got a woman in the main role now that killed her boyfriend or fiance, and basically she takes she kind of goes a little nutty kind of a la Taxi Driver, and, you know, being that she was in the original Taxi Driver, kind of ties that in and kind of makes you... It's a Silver Pictures big budget film, but I found myself revisiting that one. Um, how can we have revenge without this one? I forgot to pull this one out. Let me grab it off the Blu-ray shelf here real quick. Taxi Driver just made me think of this one. Taxi Driver kind of is a genre-bending one. Um, a lot of people classify it as no... It's a horror movie, no. It's a psychological thriller, no. It's, I think it's all of these, really. It's it's basically a psychological thriller about a man that going crazy and being lonely, his ma his descent into madness. But in the third act of the film, he basically takes revenge on people to save Jodie Foster's life. It's a revenge film with a psychological thriller background to it. That's why I've always explained it. But a uh, very excellent film. If you, I'm not going to say too many words because if you haven't seen Taxi Driver, shame on you. Rent it. Good to score Stacy from yesteryear. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Um, the Exterminator. This was a recent Synapse release. Um, I did a review on this as well. If you want more in-depth uh, on the actual Blu-ray of it, go find my review on it and watch that. Um, guys, it's just a good little early 80s one with... Uh, I think his name is Robert Genty in the lead role, and Samantha Eggers is kind of a supporting role. Christopher George is in this one. 
a lot of the genre greats of the day show up in this one. Um, you know, got that awesome cover art from the VHS days. I really enjoyed this one, revisiting this one, especially this one. Let me tell you, if you're going to view this one for the first time or you've revisited it after a while, get the unrated director's cut by Synapse. You will not be sorry. It adds back in all the gore, the delicious revenge gore that you need to see if you're going to do this. Do it right. One VHS, and I'll let you guys go in this uber long video today, and I apologize for its length, but I just wanted to make sure I get all these in there. It is William Devane and Tommy Lee Jones in a sporting role, Rolling Thunder. There is an uber cool Blu-ray of this that just came out overseas in the UK. I'm unsure if we're going to get a release of this in the US. I know right now if you want to you know, own this on optical format, you're going to have to buy one of those MGM made-to-order DVD-Rs that I'm not a fan of and I don't re really recommend but they're because they're way too expensive. You're going to spend somewhere between about 20, 17 to 22, 25 bucks just for a bare-bone DVD-R that's going to look like a VHS tape in a lot of cases. So I'd pick up a cheap VHS for right now if you want to just do a quick viewing of it. Or if you have a, the means to watch Region 2 Blu-rays, I don't know if you can do that yet, but um, if you have means, there is a cool Blu-ray from over, over in the UK area. You can get on. Uh, I don't. I can't vouch for its quality or special features, but uh, Rolling Thunder. I viewed this one on VHS tape uh, probably about a month ago for the first time. I've always saw this one in the VHS stores back in the day when I was growing up. I just never thought to rent it. I don't know why. I just. I think they always had this in the action scene, in the deep into the action thrillers, and I never really. It just the, the cover really doesn't do it justice, you know. So. Basically, guys, uh, William Devane is a recent returnee from Vietnam, and him and Tommy Lee Jones, you can tell they're both unbalanced from the war. Uh, they, they spent time in the Hanoi Hilton, which is basically a POW uh, prison. And they spend like five, or, five to seven years in there, something like that, and they come home, and they're just about trying to put their lives back together. Well, oddly enough, a gang wants the silver dollar collection that this town gives William Devane, like $2,500 or something that they're worth and of course this is back in the 70s too so it's probably worth a whole lot more but still not worth killing his family over but they do they kill his wife and his child oddly enough the gang is led by roscoe p coltrane himself old james best <laughs> he's a uh, i didn't really expect him to show up in this type of role he plays a really just cold-blooded kind of cowboy s character in this one Totally different from Roscoe from the Dukes of Hazard. Not the fun-loving Roscoe in this one. I think he's sporting a mustache too, so I didn't place him right away. But after he talked for a while, and kind of his mannerisms from being an old Dukes of Hazard fan, I, I remembered who he was. I was like, dude, that's that's Roscoe. What in the world is he doing? This, he's in there saying, you know, M F and F this, and he's cussing and stuff. I'm like, dang man, this is like different than what I'm expecting. Um, highly recommend if you that's the whole problem with this one much like Miss 45 is its availability is not really well spar it's sparse right now so if you want to get a VHS of it you can get these for cheap off the eBay and and or Amazon or if you have the capability to watch overseas blu-rays right now I know that there's a blu-ray that just came out overseas so guys I'm gonna get out of here this has been your uber long uber huge uh, way longer than it should have been video on my recommendations for revenge flicks these have been halfway reviews on these these are just ones that i like and i like to watch over and over again check them out if you want to if not leave me your comments if not that's okay leave your comments questions below concerns i will try to comment back as much as i can keep rocking dudes and i'll see you guys soon bye